Former Foreign Minister Jeremiah Minnelli has been elected the next Prime Minister of Solomon Islands, defeating the opposition leader, Matthew Whale, in a vote in Parliament. The result is a mixed bag for former Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavere's ownership, Unity and Responsibility Party. The party won just 15 of 50 seats in last month's election. But even though Sogavere declined to stand for Prime Minister this week, his party still had the upper hand in the vote after courting independent members of Parliament. So, what kind of leader will Manelli be? Will he bring big changes to the country or its relationships with China, Australia and the United States? One of the authors Claudi Na voted in Solomon Island's general election in November 2014. At that time, political campaigns were low-key and largely localized to particular areas in the country. Ten years on, we have noticed a huge change in the way campaigns are staged. This year, the live streaming of campaign events was ubiquitous on social media, which amplified and sensationalized the messages of candidates like never before. Frenzied parades involving floats and legions of supporters were common. Despite all the fanfare leading up to polling day, the primary concern of ordinary Solomon Islanders was not political wrangling, but the dire state of services in the country. The healthcare system is dilapidated, road conditions and infrastructure are poor and power cuts are constant. The increased cost of living and lack of educational and job opportunities have only made daily life more difficult for residents. For example, one voter in Isabel province told us as part of our research that he did not care what political party his preferred candidate aligned himself with. His main concern was for his member of parliament to continue to provide financial support through the Constituency Development Fund CDF. The fund pays for iron roofing for homes, school fees, outboard motor engines for transport, chainsaws and other material needs. Many voters similarly wanted their member of parliaments to join the majority coalition, so they would be able to access more benefits through the government. This was why nine of the independent members of parliaments, who unseated incumbents from the governing coalition came back to join that same coalition going into the prime minister's election this week. Manelli got 31 votes from lawmakers, which included 15 from his R party, three from Solomon Islands People First Party, one from the Kadir Party, nine independents and three other member of parliaments who switched allegiances from Wales camp. It was a smart move for Sogaver and his coalition to select Manelli as their candidate. Sogaver's popularity has waxed and waned over the past two decades. He was forced to vacate the prime minister post after no confidence votes in both 2007 and 2017. He survived another no confidence vote in 2021 which led to violent protests on the streets of Honiara and the destruction of Chinatown. Though Sogavere managed to hold on to his seat in last month's election, he won by just 259 votes. It was his narrowest margin of victory since he was first elected to Parliament in 1997. To avoid similar backlash from voters who did not want to see Sogavere become Prime Minister again, the sensible thing for his coalition was to select another candidate, the 55-year-old Manelli is from the same village Samosodu in Isabel province as the Governor General, Sir David Vunagi, which means the two men in the highest offices in the country are closely related. Manelli will likely be an inclusive leader, he has a friendly and humble personality, as reflected in his maiden speech in which he acknowledged his rival, Whale, and members of his coalition. One of the main reasons Sogaver courted controversy was his increasingly cozy relationship with Beijing since his government switched Solomon Islands diplomatic allegiance from Taiwan to China in 2019, he signed a secretive bilateral security deal with China in 2020 to that raised alarm bells in Australia. Last year came another deal to boost cooperation with China, law enforcement, and other security matters. With Manelli now at the helm, the country should return to a more business-as-usual approach to diplomatic ties with China. His experience as a career diplomat, public servant, Opposition leader and foreign minister will help him navigate the country's complex relationships without the fiery rhetoric his predecessor he had become known for. In addition, we may finally be able to see what the 2020 to security agreement entails now that a former foreign minister is in charge. Asked by the ABC whether his government would keep the deal, Manelli said yes, then added, if there is a need to review that, it will be a matter for China and Solomon Islands to discuss. However, he may face some pressure from the opposition. Peter Kenaloria Jr., 
The political wing leader of the Solomon Islands United Party has publicly expressed a desire to scrap the security agreement with China. Manelli should also maintain a cordial and perhaps more engaged relationship with Australia. When announcing his prime minister candidacy this week, he reiterated he would continue the long-held Solomon Islands foreign policy stance of friends to all and enemies to known. The broader region must continue to see the plight of ordinary Solomon Islanders as separate from the decisions of its leaders, who at times may not necessarily reflect the wishes of the people. Ask any Solomon Islander in a rural area what he or she thinks of the security agreement with China and the implications for traditional partners like the US, Australia and New Zealand. Chances are he or she might just shrug it off without uttering a response. This is because Solomon Islanders have other pressing issues to worrying about, such as how to pay school fees, how to feed their families, how to get their kids to school when the river floods and how to get fuel to take an expecting mother to the nearest health center. This is what matters most to people's lives, not diplomatic tussles between global powers. Read more on our website, worldnewworld.com.